If you want to pass the CCNA and be a good network engineer, you need to understand static routes. In this video, I'm going to explain why we need static routes, how static routes work, and how to configure them on Cisco routers. First, let's look at why we need static routes. So let's look at this topology. There's two different networks here. We have Drake's network and we have my network. Drake's network is 192.168.10.0 slash 24 and my network is 192.168.20.0 slash 24. These two networks are directly connected by R1. So they're directly connected to the same exact router. Let's say Drake wants to send me a message. Yo, Paulo, I want to get my CCNA plus help. Let's say Drake wants to send this message to me. Assuming all the IP addresses on all the devices are configured correctly, will his message reach me? Let's do a ping to find out. So the ping from Drake's PC, we see that Drake's PC sends the ping directly to the default gateway, which is the router. And then from the router, we'll send it to switch to, send it to my PC, and then I'll send the ping back. In this case, we don't need a static route because these two networks are directly connected to the same router. When they're directly connected to the same router, this means that the router knows both of their networks. So let's go to the router actually, show IP route. We see that there's four entries here, two connected routes, which is the C, and two local routes, which is the L. These routes are automatically created whenever you assign an IP address to an interface on a router. So if we look at the connected routes, these are network routes. This tells the router that if you get a packet with a destination IP address within the 192.168.10.0 slash 24 network, send it out of this interface. So this means if the router gets an IP address like 192.168.10.3, send it out of gigabit ethernet 0000, which is this interface right here. The interface that's connected to Drake's network. And similarly, if we go to the other connected route, it tells the router, if you get a packet that has a destination IP address within the 192.168.20.0 slash 24 network, send it out of gigabit ethernet 001. The local routes are a bit different. If we look carefully, we can see that they're slash 32, which means that they're host routes. So this tells the router, if you get a packet with a destination of this exactly, 192.168.10.1, that means it's it's destined for you. Like this is this is your IP address, bro. And notice that this is actually the IP address that we assigned to the interface. So G0 G000 192.168.10.1. Yep, this is the one we assigned here. And then G001 and 192.168.20.1. That's the interface that we assigned here. So just to recap, when Drake sends his message to me, yo Paulo, I'm gonna get the CCNA he'll send it to the router, the default gateway, because the destination IP address is in another network. The router will say, do I know where this destination is? And he will know where the destination is because he knows where 192.168.20.3 is. Since 192.168.20.3 is within this subnet, the router will know to send it out of G001. So it'll send it out of this interface, and go to my PC. No static routes needed in this topology. Now let's look at this topology. Drake's network and my network aren't connected to the same router anymore. Our networks both have our own router and our routers are the ones that are connected to each other. So we're not directly connected to the same router anymore. Assuming there's no other configurations than the IP address, no static routes, no dynamic routes, nothing. Will he be able to send his message to me? So we know that Drake's PC will first send it to its default gateway, which is the router. And let's see what the router does with the packet. So it sends it to the router and Whoa, why is it doing an X? The router is like, bro, I don't know where this is. I don't know where this destination is. And so I'm just gonna drop it. The pings will fail because R1 doesn't know where to send the packet to. So let's actually look at R1's routing table just to see why it's failing. Show IP route. And we notice there's four entries again because we've assigned two interfaces IP addresses on this router. So we have Drake's network again, the connected and local route for that. And then we have the transit network. This is the network between R1 and R2. But notice that my network isn't in R1's routing table. It doesn't know where my network is. This is why it's dropping the packet. Once it receives the packet, it'll check the routing table and it'll notice that it's literally not there. There's nothing in there. There's nothing in there for that IP address. So it's gonna drop it. So how can Drake reach my PC if its router doesn't know where my PC is? This is where static routes come in. A static route will tell the router, if you get a packet with a destination in this network, send it to this next hop. A next hop is basically like the next router. So in our case, the next router would be R2. There are three different ways to configure a static route on the router. 
but it's, they're all really similar. So it's basically just one way. So let's go to R1 and configure this. So in global config mode, we use the command IP route and then the IP address or the network that we wanna give a static route to. So in our case, it would be my network. So IP route 192.168.20.0 and then the subnet mask of this, the net mask, 255, it's slash 24. So 255.255.255.0. 255 so this is the first part of the configuration. Now after this, we configure either the next hop, the exit interface, or the exit interface and the next hop. So th those are the three different ways that you can configure it. The next hop means this IP address. This is the next hop interface that the router would send the packet to. So let's configure the next hop method in our static route. So we're gonna use the command IP route this, and the IP address is 46.198.33.2, and then press enter. And now if we go to the routing table, we don't have just the four default entries anymore we have another entry, which means static. So now when it receives Drake's packet to my network, when it receives it, it's gonna check the routing table. It's gonna see, oh shoot, I do have a match for this network. Where do I send it to? I'll send it to 46.198.33.2. And then here, it knows from this entry that this is directly connected to gigabit ethernet 001. So it's kind of like a chain the static route points to the connected route and then that connected route points to the interface. Now let's try to ping from Drake's PC to my PC and see what happens. All right, so let's see where the packet goes. It's gonna to go to the router. Is the router gonna drop the packet? No, it's gonna forward it. It's gonna to forward to R2 because now it knows where my network is. So let's see what happens. So the router is gonna send it to my PC, which is really good. And then what's my PC gonna do? It's gonna send a ping back or a reply. But notice here, whoa, why is it red? And then what's gonna happen? It's gonna send a message back to my PC saying, yo, you can't send a ping here. I don't know where this destination is. R1 has the static route to my network, but R2 doesn't have the static route to Drake's network. So you have to configure a static route on R1 and R2 so that they can communicate with each other or else it's just gonna be like a one-way communication. So let's configure a static route on R2. We just do the same thing, enable configure terminal IP route 192.168.10.0, 205, 205, Now let's configure the exit interface instead of the next hop. So the exit interface would be, actually, wait, hold on. What is the exit interface? Show IP int brief. Oh, do show IP int brief. The exit interface is 001, okay. And then exit interface G001. Then let's do show IP route. And here, notice how it's here instead of at the bottom. This is because we, configure the exit interface instead of the next hop. So now let's test the ping again. So Drake's PC, send it to the router. Router is gonna send it to the other router because the static route enables it to do so. R2 will send it to my PC. Then my PC will send it back and it'll send it back to R1 because of the static route and then the ping will succeed. So now me and Drake can collaborate. Now he can, now I can teach Drake how to pass the CCNA. So now that we know all of this, there's one more thing that we need to look at. It's something called a default route. If the router doesn't have a specific entry for, for that destination, it'll use the default route to send it out. So it's basically like the router's default gateway. If it doesn't know where to send it, it'll send it there. So instead of using a direct static route on R1 to my network, the 192.168.20.0 network, let's remove that static route and add a default route instead to see how they work. No IP route 192.168.20.0.198.33.2. So if we go to do show IP route, the static route is gone. So let's configure the default route, IP route 0.0.0.0. .0, .0, .0, .0. And notice that it's 0000 because the subnet mask is slash zero. This means that it will match with every single entry. And the next hop is 46.198.33.2. Now, if we do show IP route, we can see that it says gateway of last resort is set to this IP address. This is the next hop. And we can see that the S, the static route again, but it has an asterisk beside it. And what does that mean? It means it's a candidate for the default. Since it's the only candidate right now, this is the default gateway for our router. So the way routing tables work, they take the most specific entry in the routing table. So by default, the static route, because it's literally slash zero, is the least specific. 
So this means that if the router has another route to the network, if it has a static route to the network, it will use that route instead of the default route. So let's just try pinging again, just to make sure it works. Let's see R1, will R1 send it? Yep, R1 sends it to R2. Even though this network isn't specified, it uses the default route to send it out to R2. So yeah, that's everything you need to know about static routes. It's very simple. It's literally just one command. It's literally just one command. That's all you need to configure a static route. So if you want to see how to configure DHCP on a real layer three switch, you can click the video that's on the screen right now, or you can click the other link on the screen right now to subscribe. And as always, just keep letting me know in the comments what videos you guys want to see. And until then, I'll see you guys next time.